Okay, so on today's podcast, we have Chris. Chris is the owner of Big Style, and those guys are over in Ireland, and you're between County Mayo and Dublin, I think we just discussed. Is that right? That's right. Super. So Chris is a lifelong water sports fanatic. He has 20 years of surfing and kite surfing under his belt and 10 years of paddleboarding. Um, set up his company Big Style. He had a really good time expanding that company over the past nine years. Um, originally in 2013, you guys started out as a kite surfing school based in a van in Dublin. And then you've since gone on to bigger and, and greater things. And now it's a nice little business um, with a hotel in the west of Ireland. There are surf shops, um, surf and sup schools and an 18 person strong team based between the, uh, the Dublin and the County Mayor locations. Along the way, Chris has, has had plenty of incredible experiences, which I'm really keen to talk about. So uh, setting up a kite surfing center in Tanzania, I think that is, yes. uh, and running adventure holidays to Sri Lanka, and project managing, building the hotel and the water sports centers there in Ireland. So really, really busy, it sounds like. Um, paddleboarding has developed into a cornerstone now of business, um, and they've got a SUP specific centre just outside of Dublin. Uh, when Chris is on the SUP, he tends to use it for exploration, a man after my own heart, uh, paddling along the rivers and the coastlines of Ireland, and of course, definitely getting a few ways when they're going off out west. So that is Chris, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you very much for coming on to the podcast today, Chris. So I'm going to kick off with a little bit about you, Chris. So what got you into water sports, surfing, paddleboarding, kite surfing? Where did it all begin? Uh, I grew up in, in, in Sea Point in Dublin, which is like at the sea, but there was no waves. But uh, my best mate's dad was a windsurfer. So, you know, that's sort of crack. And we got taken on little trips away and started windsurfing, never really took to it. But uh, then they discovered kiting in like, I don't know, 2002 or 2003 or something. Uh, back when it was kind of the wild west of kite surfing, you know, and just, you know, two line kites and real hectic. Uh, and I started doing that then and then sort of got into the rest of us through kiting was that you could do it in Dublin. And then we'd go over to the west of Ireland and do a bit of kiting and then discovered surfing through that. And then just bit by bit, it kind of took over my life <laughs> insidiously. Um, and uh, yeah, I was a keen skateboarder when I was a kid as well. So it all kind of married in together, you know, and like anything with a board kind of made sense. And then, you know, then kiting kind of went into the freestyle, into the wave riding that crossed over with the surfing. And in my teens, I did a lot of that. And then uh, we started the kite surfing club in our university in UCD. So we used to run like uh, kite surfing trips for the students, which was like, little did I know was actually the um, like, me doing a load of research into my or preparation for my future career but i thought i was just having a bit of crack uh and that was kind of a big like big kind of step in the right direction of like getting into it professionally and then i taught kite surfing as my college job um I got into teaching surfing a little bit as well on those trips and then tried to become an adult with a with a real job in um after i finished my studies in America, I tried to become a journalist. It didn't work. Uh, took a job teaching kite surfing in Kenya. Uh, and then after that, started the company Big Style nine years ago. So it was just always, always there. And then I finally gave in to the pressure that the universe wanted me to be working this. So <laughs> I, I went for it, you know. Um, and, awesome. uh, and then supping, supping kind of came in a little after, you know, it was supping came in through having a kite surfing school on the non-windy days we got like six subs used to take people on little trips around dublin on the stand of paddle boards and then uh yeah it 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 kind of ended up from something that was a f calm day alternative became something totally of its own you know um and i've fallen in that in love with that in the last couple of years as well so a little bit all over the place but that's kind of the overview of how i got into it yeah, no, thank you for that. And I, I think that does tend to happen, really, doesn't it? Like you say, paddleboarding is kind of really, uh, ex, you know, kind of came around roughly 10 years ago. And obviously recently it's exploded. But I think 
quite often quite a few people that I speak to it's it's come from something else so for you you know kite surfing and surfing and I uh, can really relate to the you know the skateboarding I, I've been out on a skateboard for a while now but um, I, the fear of kind of falling up and breaking a bone is always there as I get older um, but yeah I mean you, you know you kind of it's that it's just being on a board isn't it it's riding a board and gliding and, and everything um, I did try kite surfing on one occasion um, I, I've got a mate down in Cornwall, there's a kite surf school there, and uh, we, we just went on the, uh, the training kite, I think it was, um, yeah. and it probably wasn't even a strong wind, but I've never felt so much power going through something as that kite. It literally pushed me off my feet, you know, I pulled down because it was in a, the limbo state, I think, where it's like just sat there in the sky, and then I Throw pulled the down on one side. Yeah, it was literally just doing that. He went, right, pull there. And he must have known what's going to happen because I shot, I don't know, probably 100 metres down the beach. I hadn't got a board attached to me at that point uh, and just kind of dragged my face. And I was like, wow, that's a lot of power. I mean, kite surfing looks amazing, but it looks so... I just, yeah, I, I just can't understand the amount of power that you've got going through that that kind of that... So that it's so really. hectic. And it's like, I mean... As as my like personal sport now, I love it. You know, I like go out wave kiting a lot in the west of Ireland, and you know uh, that sort of thing. But in terms of running it as a business and teaching kite surfing, it was a, a, not a nightmare. But like I did it, I taught it for fifteen years, and like the danger aspect is always there. You know, it's like fair enough. I'm happy enough to take the risk with my own, with myself, and I you know, I know where my limits are and I understand the sport so well, but when you strap somebody new to it, you know, and thank God I never had an injury, never hurt anybody, certainly never killed anybody, but like, I don't know, you know, every time you start somebody on a kite course, you're like, okay, all right, here we go. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be vigilant. I'm going to be around. I'm going to be super cautious, you know, and um, because things can go wrong so quickly, you know, and then there's like the other side of a teaching kiting, which is you get everybody together, you know, everybody clears their schedule, you get down to the beach, you pump up the gear, you start walking out, everybody's ready to go, and then the wind dies, and then, you know, <laughs> which was, like, the story of my fucking life, you know, so, um, in terms of, like, I don't know, when I found supping as a kind of, from a business point of view, you know, aside from how enjoyable it is as a, as a you know, person, that we have our sub school in a harbour south of Dublin, a place called Dunleary Harbour, 200 acre, massive harbour, sheltered from most winds, up to 25 knots, you're super comfortable in there, you know? And like, you know, we could get people out all day, every day. There's like, you know, such a quick step up into being able to do it, you know? Like you do one day course with us or, you know, a two hour course or whatever, in closed flat waters, I feel pretty comfortable letting people go out, you know, on their own. Yeah. Like hiding, you'd be looking 12 hours before you could even think about letting them out on their own. Then there's a lot of gear to get. So there's so many steps between, you know, getting somebody interested in the sport and getting them, uh, what would you call it, uh, independent. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I stopped teaching kite surfing like professionally in terms of big style like three years ago. And I haven't looked back for a moment. <laughs> it's so stressful. <laughs> um, <laughs> And like we still get calls, people are super keen for it, and there's some great guys still doing it in Dublin Bay here. Um, and maybe I might toy with it again in the future, but for now, I don't know. For like return on people's time and investment, you know, like you can see somebody mad stoked after an hour and a half on a sup, at any age, yeah. any physical ability, anything, they come back in delighted, you know. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I don't know. That's a really cool thing about supping. And like you said, the yeah. power of riding is, it's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. I mean, it's, it's such a technical sport, isn't it? The, the same is surfing as well. I mean, there is a certain amount of instant reward when, you know, you're catching the white water, those early sort of days of, of, of surfing. But again, it's a really technical sport, isn't it? And, you know, people are having to learn about wave conditions and, and about where to catch the wave. I mean, it, the, the actual standing and riding of a board is almost in a way like the easiest part once you're on your feet, you kind of just kind of head towards the shore, but everything else goes into it. But, you know, paddle boarding does, yeah, it, it kind of, it, it, it isn't as technical. Yes, there's, you know, there's paddle straight to learn and, and, and everything else. But like you say, in terms of progressional sport, 
um, and that's probably one of the reasons why it's so popular it, you know you, you can kind of spend a little bit of time with people and learn get the technique right and they're good to go and they get a real sense of achievement straight away whereas with you know surfing they may not have and we rely on really heavily rely on conditions and kiting like you say you know you're going to have to do a good amount of sessions before you kind of got to that point where you're riding the board and you feel that you've, you've got an achievement so i think absolutely paddle boarding ha- is such an accessible sport now um and we've seen you know we've seen like you said everybody and anybody really um i mean i've been teaching it for 10 years and, and probably 10 years ago you'd have you know your surfers your windsurfers looking for a, a, a non-windy day i'll get out of my sup but now it's yeah now it's mainstream there is absolutely everybody i mean do you find that you get you know kind of all sorts and every type of client through the door these days yeah everybody like i mean from kids parties to octogenarians you know re- recapturing their uh i don't know like you know finding a, a, a way to get outside and be like honest to god i think the oldest we've taught is in their 80s and you know as long as they're fit you know they're more than capable of doing it like and it's so rewarding seeing it you know and like the only guys you don't like to see are are the ones who kind of you know there there has been a bit of a culture in dublin especially in 2021 you know with the uh i'm sure it's a conversation you have a lot um with you know little and aldi selling subboards and people getting them and then you know jumping out into the middle of dublin bay which i mean our bay here is huge like it's uh you know many many kilometers uh and uh things can go pretty bad pretty quick in dublin bay you know um and like three rescues happened in 2021 season of people like just jumping on their i don't know i think it was a uh, mistral boards little were selling and one lad still yeah. had a pump attached and he was <laughs> fully closed <laughs> and he was you know sort of standing on it backwards you know paddle it like a fucking canoe or something like that and look at one of my friends and uh, uh he owns uh, another kite surfing in sub center francois and pure magic happened to be driving through black rock village and looking out and you know that trained eye you have years of teaching motorsports he got the binoculars out and looked over at a and he just was like that lad like you know it was a 25 knot day in dublin bay direct offshore hectic out there and there was just like one dot of a lad down there and he got it out and the fellow was in serious trouble you know no leash yeah no buoyancy aid a fucking hoodie and a pair of trousers with a pump attached to the thing and he called the, the coast guard and um they got him and you know saved his life and you know thank god Francois really lucky, yeah but like that was a real team so it's it's been a bit of a struggle especially 21 everything's calmed down in 2022 in a good way because there's less people going mental in a bad way because there's a little less business because everybody's leaving ireland at the moment yeah. and maybe it's the same in the uk but there is less kind of people going trigger happy at it and going mad and ending up in dangerous yeah. situations, you know? So that's the only, the only downside to everybody feeling like they can have a go at it and being a super uh, accessible sport, you know? Uh, but aside from that, yeah. Like, like in our harbor in Dunleary, we've had to like put up like loads of signs, you know, of like, you know, the harbour got in touch with me and they were like, there's so many people going out on their own in this harbour now on stand-up paddle boards that we have to like, you know, kind of give them specific places and tell them where not to go and put like sup-wise posters up, which is a great sign for the sport. You know, that many yeah. people take it up. Um, I'd say the same in the UK, is it? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, that that is the one thing that we're finding and I've been involved, as you said, in quite a lot of talks, um, industry talks with people like the RNLI, um, and we, we have got this problem, really, of, of exactly what you, that's a really good example of, you know, people literally buying the ball from the supermarket across the street from the beach, throwing the box open and getting out there with absolutely no understanding of how water and weather works. And and yet, like you say, before they know it, they're, they're offshore. I mean, I, I think that's that's brilliant. I've never heard of really the pump attached to the board. <laughs> uh, I've heard a few horror stories, but... That really does. And, and I think the industry is trying to um, make steps to, to obviously minimise those risks. Um, but it's a tough one, isn't it? You know, I mean, your people will come and have a lesson and that's great because at least they're getting a bit of a grounding. They're coming to people who know what they're doing. They're paddling in a safe location with people who know, you know, who know the sport and know the equipment. But there's always going to be a, a, a core of people, isn't there, who are going to head out 
um, you know, without any lessons, without any experience or knowledge. And it's the big question is how do we address those people? How do we, you know, at least give them something, something along the lines of, you know, have a leash on or just check the weather or whatever it might be. That's that's going to be the hard one, I think. And how that goes, whether it, you know, it keep. I think probably my thought is is the more people kind of get involved with the the, the budget boards, the supermarket boards probably the more we're going to see reports of rescues, fatalities, and, you know, where's that balance going to be? Is it, is it just going to keep, I think as the one increases, the other increases, um, you know, if this one goes down, that one might go down. So it's, uh, it's a really interesting time with the sport. Our government's going to bring out, because I know you guys, it's the law, isn't it? To wear a, a PFD. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, see, we don't have that in the UK yet. I mean, it could be something that they say that, that we bring in, um, so yeah, is it going to become government legislation eventually? I mean, who knows? So I think all from my perspective, all I can do is, is just do my best to teach as many people as I can and inform as many people as I can and hope that they come and you know get a lesson. So I imagine it's probably fairly similar for you guys. Similar crack, like and and, and it's exactly what you said. I mean, it's like it's this weird paradox because it seems like the most so like I've seen it twice in my life when I was teaching kite surfing that somebody comes down and buys a kite online attached to themselves and goes for it like you don't want to be mental to do that like you know what i mean like it's like it's so i like absolutely all hell breaks loose i've seen lads with the lines attached arseways the kite semi-inflated no harness i don't know like i don't, just like things going wrong really quickly and like i haven't done any but like thankfully it's such a kind of prohibitively complex looking sport that not many people are you know taking it matters into their own hands without lessons surfing a lot of people do rent boards but a lot of the more dangerous conditions in surfing tend to be quite again prohibitive you know if you look at a day where you really shouldn't be paddling out half the time you're not going to get out past the white water you know uh, if yeah. you do get past out, out past the white water i don't know like the you're probably going to get like i mean unless it's a bolt offshore day and you paddle onto like a reef point um where you can get too easily and it's like a huge swell and you get yourself caught inside usually the conditions are going to put you off of you getting in trouble and then if you do go out on a really small manageable day again the waves are going to fire you back into the in, into the shore a lot of the time i'm not saying that surfing is safer but it's just paddleboarding has this like like it seems so accessible you know and a lot of the time, the dangers are so hidden in the sport that it just yeah. seems so handy. You know, all you have to do is get on your board, jump onto this body of water and then, you know, go hog wild, you know. And there might be a 10, 12 knot direct offshore breeze that you haven't even noticed. You know, there might be a storm on the way, you know, or a big squally day coming in. And you only realize that that happens when you're out in the middle of the bay. There's, or like, you know, you might jump on a river, like what happened in Wales, you know, the river's swollen, you know? Yeah. Um, or yeah. like so many things that like you could easily get yourself into, innocently get yourself into a really hectic situation quickly without realizing, you know? Yeah. Um, while, and I think that's one of the reasons. It's this kind of like fallacy of, uh, or impression of safety because- yeah. Uh, where and then things go wrong quickly like like another incident happened in the Aran Islands last year uh, off Galway in the west of Ireland some two ladies went out paddling no it was in 2020 paddling off off the coast of Galway on an offshore day and they didn't have the strength to paddle against a 15 knot offshore breeze and they got sent out so far that they ended up at the back of the Aran Islands which is like miles offshore around the back wow. of the next stop after the back of the Aran Islands is America or you know like total and they ended up grabbing onto a lobster pot boy and staying there all night until they were picked up by the by the pot fisherman uh the next morning um and that was a summer calm day with like a kind of i think a sea breeze sort of thing kicked up in the evening you know and sent them out uh anyway look don't not to get bogged down in it but it's 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 such a it's a phenomenon in the sport that I haven't seen in the other sports, let's say. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm sure you guys, ASI are doing great works along with other bodies in England of trying to 
put my hands on this situation, I presume. Yeah, trying. We're trying. <laughs> and it's guys like yourself, Chris, you know, that are out there on the on the front teaching and, you know, getting. So it's the same as really. It's all the sub schools and the surf schools trying to just yeah, educate and inform people. But you're absolutely right. It It is uh, scary to think. And, and I think with more people paddling inland now, especially here you're in the middle of the country. Um, we get people with even less experience that hopping on a, and like you say, the sea can look, you know, you can sort of look out the window and there's big waves, you think, oh, I'm not going out there, but a river or, or a lake or something like that can be really um, deceiving, can't it? You can look at that river and go, oh, it's a sunny day, that looks, that looks really nice, I'm going to hop out my board. And of course, you know, you don't realise there's actually a really strong flow or an undertow or, you know, there's a weir. 200 meters in front of you and and it's it's stuff like that so i think the inland stuff as well is is having quite an impact on um how people are getting into danger in the sport so it certainly is it's yeah it's a, it's an interesting topic it's um it's something we just got to keep chipping away i think as as people within this industry so um i'm going to move forwards now i really want to hear about big style your business so um so it's gone from a, a, a van and kite surfing. We have um, the hotel. We I'm just throwing back to my notes here. We've got surf shops. We've got surf and surf schools. Obviously, I've seen um, the like a it's like a big shipping container. Is that right on the side of the the harbour there with the, the massive big logo? So that all looks incredible. And of course, you've got like 18 people working for you. So tell me a bit about the business. Um, how's that going? It's great. I mean, like, we're actually, we're having a little bit of a slow year, but in, in amongst, I think it's just, I think everybody industry wide are having a little yeah. bit of a slow year. Uh, yeah. But like, that's the smallest, I mean, it's been the pleasure of my life running this thing. I, I love it. Um, it started with like, well, me and my own teaching kiting. And then we got like, but then it ended up being like a group of friends. There was five or six of us who were really close running it for years. Um, and it was essentially just one big, holiday uh not holiday but like we, we basically just had fun and people joined us for it you know so for years and that was it was a very very genuine experience and it still is but like for a long time it was essentially you know from like i don't know from from april till november in ireland we'd do all sorts of things we'd have our little stand-up paddleboard base before we had the containers there we'd have it uh we'd we'd teach uh, supping in, in south dublin and then we'd do the kiting trip things and then we one of the big cornerstones we used to do back then was bring people kiting and surfing to the west of ireland so we'd bundle everybody into like a rented bus drive to the west of ireland bring all the gear camp them on like like 20 odd people in like some wonderful spot beside a lake for kiting or like with waves or whatever like that in the west tire them out cook barbecues go mad uh give them the best time everybody gets pissed has a blast and then we'd ship them back to dublin on sunday and that was like for years that was our cornerstone and it was kind of almost an extension of what we did in college i don't know like you have college obviously college clubs in the uk same sort of crap. yeah we do <clears throat> so i took the college formula and applied it to grown-ups essentially um and a lot of them were in the tech business in ireland because we have all the headquarters of google and facebook and linkedin and PayPal and what have you in Dublin. So we used to basically get all the tech heads with a few quid, pay us a couple of hundred quid. We'd bring them to the West of Ireland and show them a mad time. That was the cornerstone of it. Me, five <laughs> my mate, having a bit of crack. And then we had this bright idea in like 2015 that we, when it got too cold, we'd bring the same sort of cruise somewhere tropical. So we like, I don't know, I, I, I ran a trip to, Kenya. I used to live in Kenya, teaching kite surfing for a couple of years. So I brought them back to Kenya, and uh, again, same crack. You know, we didn't camp them that time, but we brought them, rented a couple of houses, and taught them kiting. Uh, and then we did that in Sri Lanka, same sort of thing. But we ended up teaming up with existing kite surfing centers. And then in Tanzania in 2017, we went totally mad and like teamed up with this kind of hotel that was doing okay but not great in the middle of nowhere and uh we took over we built like with the local boys we built this big kite surfing center out of wattle and dobe sort of thing like mud and sticks oh wow and uh 
in this kind of hotel, which was full of these little kind of similar buildings. And we'd bring 25 Irish people out twice or three times every winter. And we did that for years. And that was kind of basically, we were a kite surfing center with a supping thing that specialized in bringing people on mad experiences. And we kind of got a bit of a name for that in Ireland, you know. Um, and all we really had to offer was ourselves and a bit of kit, you know. So the pressure was always on us to be the life and soul of the party. And it was great for our 20s. Great. Like, we just <laughs> had a blast, you know. Like, so from about 25 to about 31 or something like that for me. So that, um, we did that. And then... Myself and my business partner, Ben, we just one day, we kind of went like, we can't do this forever. I think I'm going to have a nervous breakdown if I keep drinking so many pints and going like not, not sleeping and traveling around. So in <laughs> 2019, we took over, or 2018, we took over an old hotel in the west of Ireland. We put our money where our mouth was, got a few, little bit of sponsorship, had some savings and totally revamped this 15 bedroom hotel in County Mayo. <clears throat> and we've all... We're both keen kind of DIYers, so we did most of it ourselves. We dropped shipping containers into the courtyard into an old and built a courtyard. Like I don't know, there's too much to explain, but we basically revamped the whole thing. Um, and there's a pub on site now, and there's a yoga studio. There's 15 bedrooms and a big communal area. We've got a vegan chef. We've got a courtyard with a stage. The big shipping container there has this viewing platform overlooking the Atlantic. Um, this winter just gone, we built a sauna and a hot tub set up there overlooking the Atlantic as well. It's called the Big Dipper. Um, and uh, <laughs> so that was kind of like, so since 2019 to now, that was the big meaty project in the West of Ireland. That's our baby. You know, that's like, that's where I'm going back there this evening after I've, now that the baby's been scanned and given the thumbs up. Uh, and um, <laughs> that's our buzz and it's just a wild place and like we're kind of aging hopefully gracefully slightly now so like I'm not on every weekend session you know and like you know I'm yeah. not in the water all the time and I'm drinking far less pints and uh <laughs> like, <clears throat> but like now we've hired the next generation of us boys you know lads in their mid-20s yeah. who are good at having the crack I'm good at teaching water sports but you know um yeah <laughs> so that's our crew down there now and then on the East Coast in 2020, we always had like a kind of a van set up in Dunleary Harbour. And very kindly, Dunleary Ratdown County Council gave us the opportunity to put um, some a permanent base there. So Dunleary Harbour is the perfect spot for stand-up paddleboarding in, in Ireland. It really is. So they saw what we did in the West of Ireland. And they said, you can have five car parking spaces, which are 16 foot by eight foot yeah they said, you can have five of these and you have to be able to put a, a removable structure in there using that space build it yourselves and if it's all good we'll let you stay there so we were like and five car parking spaces happens to be exactly the same size as a 40 foot <laughs> container <laughs> or, yeah sorry two 40 foot containers so we put we put a 40 foot container and a 20 foot container and a deck in there overlooking the water back in 2020 and we opened that and that was brilliant so that really went well <clears throat> and then so now suddenly in 2022 we're kind of looking at this little mini empire that we built for water sports in ireland and we're kind of like jesus come a long way from us only being able to offer tents a barbecue burger ourselves and some and some water sports gear um so that's kind of where we're at now. And, uh, and now it's just kind of streamlining and uh, putting manners on the whole setup and making sure that it actually makes money and uh, that it, uh, <laughs> and now. I see at the end of the day, it's gonna be a bit of money coming in. We can have all the fun, can't we? We've got to pay the bills. <laughs> I mean, that's it. It was like, and it's funny, you know, like it's, it's this classic thing, you know, me and my business partner were aging with the business and in our mid thirties and we're kind of like, okay, I used to basically get paid in fun, you know what I mean? And now I'm like, <laughs> I need to get paid in money. <laughs> um, so no, it's still, it's, it's, uh, but uh, yeah, and then we had, we had obviously a couple of tough years, 20 and 21 were 
you know, we built a hotel yeah. in 2018, 19, got a season and a half of, you know, good gear out of it and then kind of had to shut down for two years in Mayo in the West of Ireland. But that, as serendipity would have it, getting the chance just before COVID to build that sub school in Dunleary kept the business afloat because everybody had to do yeah. outside socially distant events. And that suddenly, that was our saving grace. So, I mean, you know, yeah, brilliant. Um, well, it, it, it had a weird effect, didn't it, COVID? Because it, it although everybody was locked down, it, it, the sport exploded again. And obviously, like, yeah. say you're operating in the kind of guidelines, you know, and you were socially distancing and all the rest of it. But we were never, and, and a lot of people I spoke to, everyone was just so busy because everybody couldn't go anywhere. They couldn't go abroad. And they're like, well, that's on the doorstep. And when they kind of released, you know, a little bit of the restrictions, all right, you were doing it in your groups of, in the UK. We, we were having to stick to quite strict numbers and things like that. And so it was, it was less, but we were kind of inundated. And there was, a, from memory, one of the summers, which one was pretty decent weather-wise, so... Um, people obviously getting in off the back of that so I was going to ask actually how did how did that affect you but it sounds like the um the sub school kind of uh, as you said kept things going really oh, Chris 2021 was insane like I don't know like my, my only mistake was that I judged 2022 by 2021 huh? I was, yeah <laughs> <laughs> I was like like we only managed to get the doors open in late July 2020 <clears throat> and suddenly like you know that was really busy you know and that was good and, and 20 i think some of you're talking about it certainly in ireland was 21 we had a beautiful summer you know it was it was stunning mm -hmm. like uh and i don't know like i mean I, I did my forecasting for 2022 based on 2021 with allowing for a 25 percent decrease in 22 compared to 21 because i kind of i knew that was a bit of a false friend you know like you can't have we had nobody able to leave gorgeous weather and half the pubs were closed and you couldn't get a restaurant booking because you had to sit in the terrace what are people going to do yeah you know? they're going to go to the feckin skate park the mountain bike trail the stand-up paddleboard in school yeah go for sea swims. so we were shooting fish in a barrel you know um and um, it was brilliant <laughs> so i i made the mistake of only assuming we'd be 20 percent down 25 percent down we've actually been 60 percent down on 22 compared to wow. 21 um, and it's you know but like i don't know i think the uk has had a different experience you guys are getting heat waves we've had rain waves um <laughs> just be like i think i made that term up but been raining a lot <laughs> um, so and i think that's kind of that's kind of it but also people are queuing to get out of dublin airport you know like fucking heading yeah. to italy and france and spain and what have you myself included i was in italy two weeks ago <clears throat> so you know i don't blame anybody uh uh obviously uh, the, the, it's nothing uh, everybody i talked to in ireland in 22 is down from 21 you know um i don't know if it's yeah. the same in the uk i, I didn't like but... no, yeah it's everybody i speak to it's exactly the same um everybody said things are down we've had quite a lot of wind as well recently <laughs> Um, and no matter where you're in the country, I've spoken to people all over the country and, and it, it, yeah, that's a lot of lessons had to be cancelled just because it's too windy. Um, and we, we've had it here I and mean, we're, as I say, right back in the middle of the country in a really sheltered location. But the wind keeps switching to a southwesterly wind, so it keeps blowing the wrong way for us. Um, and we, we have had to cancel stuff, you know, so that that has there's, it's definitely the same in the UK. There has been a, um, a levelling off of, of business for sure. Yeah, it's, it's comforting to hear. <laughs> <'Cause>, you know, <laughs> when you're in business, you know, you're like, am I doing something totally wrong and I can't notice what I'm doing here, you know? Um, but but even even like even whether it's not wind and weather dependent, like I mean that's what's really scuppering us in Dublin. Like like you said, it's been the windiest summer. And that's why I'm like, should I be teaching kite surfing? You know? Um <laughs> then but in Mayo, like what we offer is usually mostly directed at inbound tourism sorry inbound tourism uh, staycations you know people who are leaving dublin to go to yeah. you know uh, and that was huge in the previous years and even before covid that had a certain reasonably large bite of what people would be spending their holidays on but this year i just think everybody's like like you know 
just suddenly released you know this level of like final freedom and they're just fucking their marbeas and their fucking greek islands and i don't blame them but it's reflecting so much and and i think it's not being made up by the inbound tourism internationally for ireland because for some reason we've got like these mad like car hire prices and um uh what do they call them uh like the hotels in the cities are still really expensive and yeah, I'm hearing when I'm on these kind of like talks with Fulcher Ireland, which is our tourism board, that seems to be the crack. People are selecting different countries rather than Ireland. So our tourism in general is down, our inbound tourism yeah. is down. So like, and there's a little bit of a kind of recessiony feeling due to the inflation and then kind yeah. of, so like 22, we're fine. But like in the heady days of 2021, I was like, I could be a millionaire by the end of 22. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It kept going like that. I think we all would be, wouldn't we? It was, yeah. it was certainly a bit of a golden year in in that sense, wasn't it? But all, all things have got. I think it it had to level down a little bit, and I don't think the sport, it's definitely paddleboard, is not going anywhere. Um, there's still going to be the demand, and, and whilst we've got loads and loads of boards flooding the market, that's still going to be there as well. It's whether people want to kind of come to guys like you and guys like me to to have those experiences and to learn or they're just going to kind of go I'm going to get me bored and go on to the beach as we were sort of discussing before so I think yeah I think it's going to it is going to continue but I think uh the the golden era might might be over now who knows <laughs> no and then like I mean there's a couple of guys I know on this side of the <clears throat> this side of the 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 water who bought big you know invested in a lot of kit you know, off the, and I wouldn't blame them, you know, like bought big stocks reserved for paddleboards because they sold hundreds of paddleboards last year. And then even allowing again, mentally for that 20% rate of drop off, I think there's a lot of people stuck with a lot of gear as well, you know, in, yeah. and then, because remember in 21, like I was onto red paddle and I was like, can I get a six boards? And they were like, maybe in 2024. And I was like, right. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, so it was like nobody could get anything, you know, um, along with yeah. wetsuits and what have you. So a load of companies in Ireland and we don't really have much retail, like we stock a few bits and we actually didn't restock much for 20, 2022. But yeah, it's been tough on guys, you know, like, like, you know, buying for the onslaught of people with, the mind, with, with their minds on 2021 and then it not happening, you know. So um, hopefully this is like, you know, what were people calling it a covid hangover you know like one more yeah one more year the 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 villain of covid has raised its head one more last time one last time to kind of i don't know have a go at us and then hopefully everything will level out in 2023 and we'll be able to yeah return to business yeah. as usual maybe yeah <laughs> hopefully i think you're right i think that's how it, it probably is going to go so um okay cool so i was gonna the next question i was going to ask was um, what made you come to the ASI as a, as a training provider? I like the ASI. I like I like that like it's a one stop shop because we've got surf and sub schools, you know, um, which was really handy. Um, one of our our main, I mean, what you guys have done well is you've assimilated yourself. In Ireland, we have huge insurance problems. Huge. We have a we have a litigation culture that's through the roof, so it's really quite hard to get what you guys would pay. 100 euro to get insured for we pay 2000 euro you know um wow. so what the asi cleverly did was they get a deal with hastings insurance which is a big west of ireland insurance broker and made your courses the main thing they the only thing that they'd you know which i thought was a very very good business move whoever was in charge of that tanya or, <laughs> or whatever so that you know that obviously pushed us in a direction um and yeah like a one-stop shop um, it's fairly, you know, the, the courses are comprehensive enough. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think that's it. It was like we could do the whole thing. The insurance was easy. The packages are kind of are, are pretty manageable. Like what I mean is like uh, if I get my if I've got like three, I've got two instructors and three, including myself, who are surf and sub instructors and having those like rescue certs that cross over and all that sort of stuff. It's it's a good system, you know um yeah and I, I i enjoyed i always enjoyed i haven't dealt with many people since tanya stepped down from the front but i've been enjoyed doing with tanya and um so yeah i think you guys are doing a good job 
Um, Cheers, Bernie. <laughs> my own my only confusion is sometimes the processes are fairly labyrinthine. Um, I, I I'm like when you're when you're trying to get ten or eleven people certified at the same time. I, I I've got my manager in Dublin trying to do it, and then you know you've got like because it's hard it's hard it's hard to keep like we've got police vetting forms for teaching underages we've got yeah. first aids lifeguards then the asi various certificates we've got normal rescue you know uh then we've got the sup the level one surf level two so you're kind of like i have a spreadsheet and i'm trying to figure out what everybody's doing you know <laughs> so but, <laughs> but i think if, if we had that with I, if we had that at the Irish Surfing Association or whatever like that, it's still the same crack, you know. It's just, it's just, yeah, confusing, mind-boggling, isn't it? It's suddenly you go from like you say to sort of having a kind of a bit of fun and you know everybody's there to like, oh my god, I've I've got to do this now and I need that bit of paperwork and it is, it's a huge and, and I think sometimes people don't realise that they see the fun part of what we do and they go, yeah, I want to be a paddleboard instructor. I want to be a surf instructor. I'll be on the beach all day and having fun with my mates, but they don't see the other side of it. Do they? they don't see the things that you just mentioned. They don't see, you know, all the bookings that are going on. It's, it's a huge, it's a full-time gig. The, the bit, the teaching bit on the water is the fun part. That is almost the easy part because we've done all the legwork just to get to that point. So yeah, it's. I think people don't realise kind of how much goes into it at the end of the day. It's like you could say, what did my old man say to me? He was in business as well. He was like, it's not the easy route. It's the most rewarding. It's the most fun route. Yeah. Uh, but it's far from the easy route, you know, and I, I always stood by that. You know, it's like you need to have, you need to have a good sense, a, a good ability to handle stress be able to pivot on things juggle a lot of a lot of different fucking tasks and jobs at the same time um there's no i mean like if anybody ever asks me about going down this route like you said i think people think like i'll just get away from the rat race and i'll put my feet up on the beach and rent a couple of paddle boards and no it's not the easy route but i wouldn't do anything else no. yeah <laughs> i agree with you there okay cool i was going to um just ask you a couple of things about um uh, tanzania and sri lanka and kind of your, you've touched on it already but yeah i just wanted to know what was it what was it like out there what was the water like you know um let's kick off with with the uh, tanzania so what was it like being out there i loved it it was just east africa captured a bit of my bit of my heart a few years back when I first taught kite surfing there in Kenya it was it was such an adventure you know it was like because when we went because a lot of the kite surfing places and stuff are in Zanzibar which is the big island off the off the coast of Tanzania there and it's you know it's magic down there but it's quite quite touristy and quite and they've got these big flat water like amazingly like candy blue perfection white sand lagoons there in Zanzibar and it's amazing but like it's you know there's 12, 15 kite schools there and everything like that so we found our way to a place called Tanga um, and then went another 40 minutes outside of Tanga to a town called Kigombe which is like really the middle of nowhere you know and like a few of my connections in East Africa found me this family this Kenyan family who owned this hotel and having a little bit of trouble filling it over the winters uh and like when we when I got there it was like flying a bi propeller plane land in Tanga you know a three-seater four-seater plane land in Tanga a feckin like Land Rover defender <laughs> on the bumpy roads out to this spot and then you're there with this like and the beaches weren't they weren't quite Zanzibar, you know what I mean? Like the sand was a little bit darker, you know, it was, you know, on a low tide, a lot of the kind of reef got exposed and it wasn't that good. We had to drive, you know, 20 minutes to get to a more reasonable kiting beach, but like, it was pure adventure. Like we had to, in order to be allowed um, kite surf on the beaches, we had to like make like, I don't know, have talks with the chief, the Manyakitu in Swahili, you know, like, and like, uh, wow. and, like <laughs> and then like, you know, they'd be like, 
well, if you want to kite surf on the beaches, what's in it for us? Uh, you know, so we ended up building yeah. a water pipeline through Kagombe for them. And next year we built a, you know, a kind of a, a dispensary for malaria medication. So we were doing these charitable things as well. And kind of, and then like at one stage, you know, like we're, we were clearing kind of, uh, clearing like blown up parts of reef out of the way so we could go kite surfing in places because they do dynamite fishing off the back of the reefs there. Um, yeah. We're hiring like local fishing dows to take us out to like sandbars off the coast that we'd like look at on Google Maps and be like, I think there's a sandbar there, you know. And then we'd like kite surf back from the sandbars. You know, we had a, we had a they had a local football team called Al Qaeda, and they had a, no, what were they called? Yeah, they were, they were called Al Qaeda with two crossed AK 47s as their uh, oh my God. <laughs> as their flag for their football team. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, we were Did like, you get a shirt? Uh, yeah, well, we had a, we got big style football shirts made and we played against them. Yeah. But, uh, I think they then changed the name to Gagambe Star, but they still had the two crossed AK 47s. Um, <laughs> and we were just like, where are we and what are we doing? And then so five or six of us as our mates set up this whole thing, got the kite gear out there had to smuggle the kite gear in because there's these massive import taxes on any equipment. So we were like hiding kite gear and blah, 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 blah. Eventually got it in and then we set it all up and then we have 25 Irish people arriving into Dar es Salaam <laughs> and then we fly them up on the biprop plane. They all arrive in and then we show them two weeks of the maddest time ever, kite surfing in like unexplored waters you know, like rivers filled with crocodiles, sharky waters, like just mad stuff, like, you know, and like, I don't know, like just pure adventure. We did that for three years. And then like by the last one in February 2019, I was like, we're going to kill somebody one day. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we're not going to be. Somebody's going to get eaten by a crocodile by the sounds of it. Crop, like, you know what I mean? Or like feckin Luke. one lad got his finger degloved. I remember he got his wedding ring taken off. And like, oh. it was like, we got into the hospital, but like, the hospital, like, and after that, we started getting after people that. like emergency air evac. Like everybody had to buy this emergency air evac insurance. And then by the time, like February, 2019, I was like, we just built the hotel at that stage in Mayo. The business was a bit bigger. And I was like, you know what? Let's cut our losses here. You know, we've had a great yeah. time. We've done seven trips to Tanzania nobody's been badly injured nobody's been hurt we've had a wild time wild time let's let's leave it and then next Quit winter your head. Anyway, so it was so it was all right but uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it sounds like you've had a really amazing time out there completely different world and culture isn't it i mean uh, just a million miles from from where i live here and from you guys over in, in mayo as well in dublin tell me a little bit about sri lanka so what was it like out there it was a little it was a little bit more tame it was it was great you know it was like there was these two big lagoons in a place called Kalpitya. Sri Lanka is about the same size as Ireland so it's uh it's not too far you fly into Colombo down there in the corner and you go up to Kalpitya um and that's on the border between um the Singhalese and the Tamils so it's old kind of like uh like 20 years ago that was fierce fighting going on there between the two of them so there's still some kind of in North Tan Sri Lanka there's still some land mining sort of beaches that are a bit sketch you know like you can't go to some and like you know there's a lot of like bullet riddled buildings that you know and like there's still wow. some like some tensions between the Singhalese and the Tamils and so it, it had its wild elements as well but where we went was was much more sort of um much more established over the last few years because they have these in kiting to get two big flat lagoons facing out or any big flat lagoon facing out onto the water so you get like onto the sea so you get really clean clear non-gusty sea breezes on flat shallow water to teach people that's really what you want in guiding yeah and it also yeah. worked really well with supping so like when it wasn't windy you could go sup the lagoons and explore and go kiting but like by the time we were there five or six kite schools had set up there um yeah so it was like still really fun and like total culture shock and you know and it was amazing and uh, I spent a lot of time traveling around the place, but it was, it was, uh, it was, we felt safe. We were going to somewhere pre-established. They had like, um, they, you know, they had their whole system there on their, on their kite surfing schools. 
but uh still like i mean it was great because i used to have to go there in the in the off seasons to set up just before the wind came in and nobody was around and a lot of the kite schools were closed so i got a bit of time with the local boys and we'd go fishing with them and like i don't know they did this one night i remember they did this um i went with this lad morfield and his dad the local boy and uh they hand fished in the lagoons at night use following the fish by the phosphorescence trail they left so like we'd yeah. stand with a sack in the lagoon at like nine or ten o'clock at night and they'd follow the phosphorescence trail of the fish and they'd grab the fish out you know what I mean? and then they throw it in the sack and like uh wow. amazing like you know using this yeah mass mad i don't know yeah uh bioluminescence from the plankton in order to track the fish in movement you know and then we'd like they have these like little beady cigarettes rolled in a beetle leaf. So me and the two boys were standing in a lagoon after our catch, smoking beady cigarettes in the, in the starlight <laughs> in the lagoon with phosphorescence everywhere. And I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, um, I like a, a, a fish in a smoke. <laughs> fish in a smoke with the feckin' schlanken boys. Like it was, I'm sure, you, I'm sure, I'm sure it's all these sports have taken you to some wild places in your time as well. And uh, not as wild as that. <laughs> <laughs> you've had a few no, I'm not as, uh, no I've, I've had a few yeah but nothing nothing to compare to what you've just told me there um you know although birmingham can be quite wild in its in its times <laughs> on a saturday night <laughs> but, so, yeah like yourself i mean I, I've, I've been to a few places not not many um been to places like egypt and things like that not in a water sports capacity just purely um for a holiday and we did all the Nile and everything and I remember a guy um and he go come over here come over he's only a, a teenager and he opened this bucket and there's this funny crocodile or alligator thing and he's like, look at this look at this and I was like Can you keep that thing away from me man I don't want... and then he was trying to sell me cans of Stella and there has been a few but I'm not not quite as wild as you Chris so I need I think I need to Maybe when my kids are a bit older, I might have to go off on a couple of crazy adventures. I might give you a ring. <laughs> well, maybe we'll, get, we'll 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 reopen our um we'll reopen our our Tanzania trips for a more discerning older, yeah. you know, like ten years time. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm actually planning on. I've been told that like remember I was saying I'm having this kid. I've been told that like what you should do is in the first six months of their lives you should go away and like get a holiday in because they're kind of grubs. They don't really do anything, you know, for the first. Like, yeah so i think myself and my wife are going to go out to back to kenya for like the first two months of or like of the year of the new year in 23 and just kind of like i don't know like go because i think i have a feeling my footloose and fancy free days are uh are coming to an end here <laughs> <laughs> so i might try and get you one gotta, last adventure you gotta you gotta kind of get through that period so for me it's starting to come to an end because my kids are quite independent now so you know they're they're in their rooms they're out with friends so you get like a little bit of my, myself my wife will sit there going this is weird they're not asking us to do things it's of course they want money for stuff so you kind of have your second resurgence i reckon when they get to their teen years yeah. uh so yeah the, the early years definitely it's uh a lot of daddy 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 but you know it's it's amazing stuff it really is cool so, yeah. I, think uh, the, I was gonna say so what what are the plans for the future chris you kind of mentioned it already but uh, obviously you've got a lovely baby on the way so uh being a dad is one of them but what about with the business how, how do you see things going it's a hard one it's 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 a hard one like it's we've reached a real impasse you know in a, in a point where like because it's quite big now you know and like the thing that people do tell you but you don't listen about the bigger business is there's just way more to do all the time you know um yeah so like I don't know, you know, like there's the point that we could go and kind of put another sub school here, maybe, you know, expand the hotel, you know, maybe put something abroad. I don't know, you know, like it's it's big talks at the moment because there's a little bit of money there. We could be able to do it. Um, my more cautious approach is, and I think it's what I'm going to do for the next few years, consolidation, you know, make everything work smooth and well with a good team, make sure the money's coming in. And then what we want to do is what we started we're starting a little blog series it's called big stars little adventures and we've done like a handful of them and so like we've just started like me and the team and a few of the old team who have kind of moved on and done other things that 
we all get together um because we've got a sister company called big style media house that makes content for um for like it's videography and we make content for various different companies so we come in with all our camera gear and we basically come up with an adventure go on it um film it make it kind of cool write a blog post about it feature it on our website put it on our instagram and uh at the moment for this series of adventures we've teamed up with a clothing brand who are like kind of we're wearing their gear so we have a little bit of budget from them to do the adventures we make them a video to, this sort of thing so yeah that kind of like like kind of lifestyle life you know big style culture stuff i really want to work on yeah um it'll keep the adventures going and the fun stuff um and keep like you know this may sound a bit shallow but you need to get the social media stuff going on as well so you know we need to like perpetuate or live the lifestyle we're perpetuating you know what i mean yeah or per sorry perpetuating presenting you know lives the lifestyle we're presenting so that kind of that's something i really want to focus on and maybe try and get like a bit of a following on that and there'd be an element of a how-to so they had small adventures like the first one was clue bay in the west of ireland 365 islands in a big bay so we took the paddle boards out we paddled like in the evening over to one of these islands camped out in the island and then did like a 20k downwinder through the whole bay into westport and just filmed it and filmed the journey and put it on our instagram and made and you know like be, being a our, starting our male modeling career with all our branded clothing <laughs> um the second one we we're going to cycle from our dublin base to our mayo base so it's about 270 kilometers over three days and just kind of like you know have a little bit of a you know we go for a sup in dunleary cycle to mayo and go for a surf that's the second one and then the third one is we're doing a free diving course off the west of ireland and then we're going to like use that to do some spear fishing and catch it and it's so we're going to do three of these with this brand see if it works do the blog see if it gets any traction at all and then pitch it to another company and do another three over the winter so that's the near one you know consolidate everything we have and kind yeah. of get back into being the guys who are experts in little adventures you know well that. if you if you need a, a good looking uh host don't ask me <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the demograph you know we need you know, a man a man in his uh yeah, a more what would you call it uh a mature a mature uh element uh, yeah well you look about 35 is the thing so maybe we don't need like it uh god bless you you've taken 11 years <laughs> off my actual age <laughs> And, uh, I say the, the camera lies. I just I just turn the uh, the brightness down a bit, and it takes the grey out. And <laughs> you know, a little bit of a suntan always helps, doesn't it? <laughs> and one of those. Have you got one of those filters on though? You look yeah, you know, which gives you fuller lips and bigger lashes and uh, smoother <laughs> skin. Is that? <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll I'll let you know what the link is after we've spoken. <laughs> Thanks, man. I need all, I'm starting to need all the help I can get. And how about you guys for ASI? Just real quick, are you guys like? I mean. I know Paul's coming on as CEO, or you, you guys are kind of, it's not yeah. CEO, uh, is he CEO? No, no, he's coming on as... Yeah, no, he is, yeah, yeah, CEO worldwide, so yeah, he's going to be overseeing things, so uh, yeah, looking forward to that, he starts September, um, and yeah, we, like you guys are in a bit of a period of transition, so coming out of COVID, um, we're just trying to nail down kind of our courses and our pathways, and just building a good network, and, and one of the things I, that's really important to me is you guys and being in touch with you guys and chatting to you guys and promoting what you're doing and supporting the businesses that you run so that's kind of the game plan and and, and paul's obviously going to be part of that so i'm i'm really looking forward to working with him come september and running my own business as well running central sup so uh keeping that afloat literally <laughs> no it's going well it's good it's just busy really Where, busy you so, the canal system there or is it is it on a lake or is it we're, we're on a lake, but we do have access. We've got a river that runs behind us and, yeah, some nice little canals and things. We do we do, do some stuff on there, that, but, but the majority is on the lake. We've got a nice little setup now and we've got, um, you know, a container of boards and a few staff working for me. So, yeah, it's, we're right in the middle now of some holidays just started. So everybody's out there. And the sun's shining again. We're, we're all right at the moment here. We've, you know, it's still pretty warm. So it's got that southwesterly wind that keeps appearing. So yeah, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's oh, for us is 
onshore in the west of Ireland, so it ruins the waves, and offshore in the east of Ireland, so you can't get it. It's offshore for kite surfing, so it doesn't work, and it upsets the stand up paddleboarding. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of no real benefits to these southwesterlies. So, hopefully, they'll go away soon. It's it's fairly new for us. Normally, it's northeasterly, so it's not a mega thing. But when it's blown southwesterly, it's warmer. But it blows in the wrong direction. So ideally, in a lesson, what we want is guys paddling into the wind, so they've got that little bit of resistance there. So if they need to, we can turn them around and bring them back. But at the moment, it's, it's going straight down the lake in the opposite di- sorry in the opposite direction. So of course, they get into the bottom of the lake really easy. And then when they're turning, you know, with a little bit of wind, you can see there's a little bit more. It's like, come on, get the paddle in there, get, dig in. So yeah, but you know, this is our sport, isn't it? It's it's uh, it's at the mercy of the weather gods. So yeah. <laughs> and if it was easy to run, sure everybody would be doing it. Exactly. You know, that's the thing. Exactly, exactly. But I wouldn't change it for the world. So we're gonna uh, say goodbye to you on the podcast now, Chris. That's all all the stuff to do is say thank you very much. I've loved, loved hearing about your wild and crazy adventures. And you guys are doing some awesome stuff over there with Big Star. I love the media stuff that you're into as well. Um, so, yes, yeah, so a good luck. Uh, as I say, we'll stir the line at the end of this, but uh, we'll just say goodbye for the podcast now. And thanks very much, Chris. Cheers, Chris. Lovely talking to you. Yeah, man. <laughs>